Okay, right, first of all, Swarford Chips, we are up at Kale & Co. And when I say kale, I don't mean that green horrible stuff that goes in your smoothie. I mean a fantastic machine shop. In fact, two machine shops. The first one we're going to talk about is a walkthrough with their drone. We're going to learn. What are we going to learn? We're going to learn it's all about investing automation and not just investing in automation, other systems as well. So, Kale & Co, what can I say? They're up in Sunderland. Are they Mackham or are they Geordies? They are Mackhams, there you go. Rowan says they're, they're not Geordies. He's going to offend half, if not all, the population up north. We will not be welcome back, but we've been thrown out of worse towns than this. Towns or cities, I ask. Anyway, come on, let's go inside and find out more about their machine shop and what they've been doing. It's very quiet in here because they're all concentrating because these guys are like kids in a sweet shop. It's like Christmas all come at one because Harry and Ryan, first of all, they've got the Zeus. Everybody has to have a Zeus if you're an engineer, any decent engineer. Do you need a Zeus, guys? We always need a Zeus. There you always. go. There you go. Nice and simple. What are you playing with there, Harry? Um, just on NX at the moment, modelling up a part that will be going on the cam software. You're supposed to be using your open mind hyper mill. Um, there you go. So, <laughs> how's that? Okay, now I'm on the uh, open mind hyper mill. <laughs> I've been on that the whole time, so just. Uh, Do you like using it? Yeah. Love using it. It's just really easy to use. Just, uh, just a great piece of software, really. He stuck for words. He wasn't earlier when we needed to interview. Is it making the company more money? Yes. It, yeah, it is. It's bringing in new jobs that we couldn't have done before without the five-axis toolpaths. There you go. Nice and simple. Have you got a pay rise out of it? Oh, that's oh. controversial. Moving on swiftly. Come on, let's go look at the machine. Thank you very much, Harry. Sorry for it. He's just gone wrong in his programming there. I but think anyway. you're going to get kicked out of this rate, Colin. Oh, I've been kicked, again, I've been kicked out of worse places than this, trust <laughs> me. Anyway, so the point of that was, yes, we ambushed Harry there a little bit, but they just invested in Open Mind Hyper Mill. Rowan, any points about it? Absolutely. It's a fantastic piece of software. I've used it myself. You can do so much with it. The five-axis cycles are really easy to use. Collision checking, simulation, stock simulation, what's not to love? Okay, and the great example is the first time they used it, they stood by that machine next to the emergency stop because they were, they were like, is this going to crash? Is it going to crash? And did it crash, Rowan? Absolutely not. Brilliant, that's exactly what we want to hear. So, we're going to stay here though, we're going to talk through that other machine shop. Get a quick pan around here though. This is machine shop number two. It's a lot of, well, as you, you get a theme, it's a lot of Deucey machines, a lot of Matsura machines, but today is about automation and also improving processes. In that other machine shop, they've got as you'll see, a lot of Matsuras and a lot more Doosans. Why do they like them? It's not just about the machines. It is a lot about sales, support and service. So they get these machines installed and they get it done efficiently. They keep them running and they absolutely love them. They keep buying more and more and more. So with the Matsuras, they had a five axis, well, they had a three axis, they had a twin pallet, then they went to 10 pallet and they absolutely love it. They, they load it up basically let it run, they really do. And then we're gonna to get to see some more machines later on in this machine shop. They've also got some Nakamuras. The Nakamuras, automation? Absolutely, because they've got bar loaders, bar feeders, bar loaders, bar feeders. Anyway, that's controversial, we'll discuss that another time. So that's that side of things. And also in there, they've got a fully automated, um, oh, oh, look at that, I stumbled, a metrology set up and a load of more and machines, which again, absolutely love. But we'll come to that, why they do that. Right, next though, on the, on the tour is this Akuma fixed head lathe. Now don't go past those lines or you'll stop it working. Oh, come on, Rowan, what are you thinking? So here we have a Celro robot loading arm automation system. So basically load up the billets, set it running. That, that's the first time it's stopped all day since we've been here. So Rowan hasn't stopped it working. He's got some nice action shots before the engineer comes out and tells us off. So there you have it. So again, basically... Yeah, I think someone needs to come here and load up some billets, don't they? They do. A nice big fixed head machine, driven tooling. Lots of nice new tools. Oh, we're about to get told off for stopping the run. Now, here we go. I want to show you this. So this is one of their smaller Doosan machines. So they're making some dumbbells for me here. Come on, action shot, action shot. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to... No, actually, I've done, I've, I've done some working out this morning, so I'm feeling the burn, so I'm not going to lift that up. Here though, it's really, really heavy. But it's a big part there, and the key to what this part of the machine shop is doing, is big parts, but also, well, some nice, not the small, but some nice big bits as well. So that's that's from the grooving operation where they're taking off the middle of the dumbbell, as, as you so uh, eloquently put it. So this, this is actually a stainless steel part for, I think, oil and gas. So 
Yeah, really thick walls. Yep. I mean, you look at the size of that part, if you imagine a, I don't know, about a 16 mil hole in the center, that's the size of the hole in the middle, and you imagine how thick the walls need to be and how high pressure the process that that part's gonna be going into. So what you need then is a big turret and big driven tooling? Exactly, look at the size of that turret. And the grooving tool that's missing currently. Um, yeah, I that, think you're just changing it over. Yeah, that's, that, that's the mid-process you had to change over the grooving tip. So, that's your first Doosome. And again, the theme is a lot of Doosomes because great machines, great service and support. Now, one of the older machines, so again, you'll see all these machines are all looking fairly new. They like to invest a lot of the time. But this one's an oldie but a goldie. It's a big Toshiba. And look at that turning diameter. The biggest part they could turn in this machine shop is 1.3 meters. meters. So Good. get your camera in there. Tell, tell me more about it, Ryan. Do you know any more about it? So not much, I don't know. The only vertical borers I've actually seen in the wild right, so far have been manuals, which it's really interesting to see uh, a CNC, especially a CNC of this age, because most, most of the machines this old I've seen are, are all manuals, which are completely different types of machines, but they were more kind of two and a half meter size. So they were much bigger. Okay. But also another part of the theme Fanuc. They do like a Fanuc control, and it's across all the machine shops. So, the, again, we'll come to that in a minute. But all the guys, and minor step round before he goes. If you see a bit of an unsteady camera work, it's not because he's fallen over. It's because his first time filming swarm chips. But they're making on this big Dusan Puma VT 900M these, and this is because we're in the oil and gas section. These are oil and gas bonnets. Now we were chatting to the guy who's running this machine, who is Scarpered, because when they see MTD coming with a camera, what do they normally do? They go exactly. And get your get your little camera, little camera in there now. Rowan, can you tell tell me before you trip over why the gentleman likes this machine? Well, he said it's really easy to use. It's really yep. versatile. It's got live tooling on it. Oh, where's the live? Let's have a look at the turret then. Come on, uh, show us some action shots. I can't. Uh, there's right two. In front of your I think there's two bits of live tooling here right now. That looks like a in, two internal boring bars that might be live. They might not be. Uh, I can't quite tell yet, but I don't know if they've got any live tooling set up today. Okay. Maybe but, the part doesn't require it. And on there, also versatility, you've got a four jaw truck, chuck, if I can say that correctly. Yep, so you can put, what kind of parts can you put on it? Round. Round and also. Square. Uh, yeah, and also. Rectangle. Yeah. Don't know, anything really. Hex hexagonal. Hey, oh, look at you getting all six. Now six, you're, six about to fall, you're about to fall off there. And I wouldn't want you falling over, Ryan, much. Right, so there we go. Now. The question of the day is, bar loader, bar feeder. Bar loader, bar feeder. Can you explain the difference? I don't actually know the difference. Uh, no, I don't, because I don't know. Bar loader, getting the bar, slinging it in there, and that's it. So pick it up, loading it. Bar feeder, feeding it in, and it's working integral with the machine. Now, correct me, so anybody from Hyper Mill or whoever, Hyper Mill, no, that's the Open Mill Hyper Mill, it's Open Mind Hyper Mill, is the software. Hydra feed, I do apologize. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that's my basic description. So but with the bar loader, can you go higher RPMs on the on the, on the lathe? Well, it doesn't matter. I, I don't know, because the bar's actually in the machine, so I... I assume you can probably go higher RPMs with the bar loader. Put it in the comments below. Yeah, I don't know. How's that? Now, right, let's move how's, on. how's that for a big transition there? Now this, hold on, you need to, you need to gauge the size of this, so let me stand next to it. It makes it look small, but this is one big machine. There you go. Yeah, Colin's not really that big in real life. You check that out. That is a massive chuck holding a tiny chuck. Ah, oh, chuck chuck. Chuck chuck, exactly. So what, what, what's the max size on this, the max, the max diameter? You know what, I think it was, well it's a Puma 600, I don't know is the honest answer, 60 inches? I think it might no. be something like, I don't know, because they've got a steady, do you remember how big the steady is? Uh, well, let's come to, we'll show the steady in a minute, but to showcase the parts they're doing, look at that. And Seems. we had Ro Rowan curling these earlier, made them look heavy. They, that's because they are heavy. And this will take up to, in fact, here's another billet they're turning. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Six, no, 700 kilos. Absolutely and huge. to turn, as you see the length of the machine, to turn a long diameter, what do you need? Steady. Hold on, hold on, no steady. <laughs> like it, like it. You can see they're tucked behind the uh, workshop essential lawnmower. One big steady just there. So a meter diameter. A meter diameter. So that so 700 kilo part they said can actually go on the medium steady. This is actually a bit too big to be using with that. There you go. So you get the theme here. They do small. They do do small parts. Do do small parts. But big parts as well. Now part of what we're going to do today is a bit of a story about the parts they're making. And this is Rowan's favourite because it's a 
a torque, tool or torque setter. So they start off, this is one of the parts here. So these are the forgings as they come in. They've got a big fat boss that needs machining off. And I think actually they might have done up one, which is turning the OD and the threads. But there's a lot of roughing and a lot of materials to take out. Even though this forging is pretty close to the end outer shape, there's a lot of internal holes and Well, we could show that in the final and part. Grooves. And I'm relying not only on Rowan's filming skills today, but his editing skills. So if this show is A+, plus, it's down to me. If it's E-, minus, it's down to Rowan. Don't expect too All much, Colin. I can Colin. say about that. So, moving on, shall we? Now, oh, 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 don't get too close, Ryan. Don't get too close. It's got NDAs written all over it. Oh. This, though, a big ring. Get it? No? <laughs> but this is a great example of parts they're making. And they're EDMing that. We'll come to EDM in a moment. Because that's also another story about automation. Wow. Now, don't get that drawing, please. In fact, that drawing, don't get too close. But this is a big um, torque setter. And what do you say about a torque setter? I said it does deals with big nuts. That's it, absolutely. One, one of Ryan's favourites there. <laughs> so, Matt Shearer's, we've got the theme. Do some machines, Matt Shearer machine. Now, this is one of the, as I'm saying, one of the early ones, but it's big, big. I mean, the envelope and tried and trusted engineers. We've been here about 10 minutes trying to open the door. Door open. We can't do it. We can't do it. We've broken it, so we're going to leave it. But look at that working envelope in there. It is huge. So, what I found quite interesting is the fixed string they've got on here. So, that torque setter that we saw yep. has a set of splines on the end of it they're holding on these splines this piece of fixture you see the kind of the negative which i find really exciting because it's a big fat heavy part which i guess if they want to rough they have to tip it over there'll be a lot of forces in loads of weird directions that spline will probably hold really solidly really I'm solidly thinking you need to, if that's getting you excited i think you need to get out more often one <laughs> but i was just trying to find out and i couldn't find out what size envelope and what size uh, parts this machine will take. If you but look behind you, I think, out. Colin. If you have a quick look. Oi, there we go. There it's we right go. There. We've, been, we've been practicing for <laughs> at least 30 seconds of this. So 500 kilo billet and look at that, 850 mil. So big envelope, big billets. That's what I can say now. And we're talking big billets. Voila. How is that? Here's one that turned up earlier. Again, you need, you need to stand next to it to get a feel for the size of it, in all seriousness. Now, this is being made on, guess what? A decent. Doosan, absolutely. And the gentleman's in there. Busy, busy beavering away. Didn't want to go on camera, but we've got him now. Now, he was chatting to us earlier. This is actually a, do you know what it is, Ryan? Is it a fixture? No, it's not. It's just a base plate to go into another machine. Oh. And, but the, the working envelope here is absolutely massive. X, it goes to about two and a half metres. So you're talking to big parts. I do like the fact they've got a nice fourth axis or four axis from Kitagawa, over on the right there. Right, right, he doesn't know his right to his left. So I don't stop, don't let us stop you working. How's that? So just to give him that extra flexibility, right. So, and the gentleman there who is busy working, so we're not gonna interrupt him, I was chatting to him earlier about using these machines, and these machines. And he said, hey, oh, as he falls out there, as he falls out there, health and safety, ignore that, don't worry. It's all right, we didn't get on camera, so. What he said though, loves using both. The reason is both got banner control. Can you spell that out? What do you mean these machines and these, these machines? Sorry, Ryan? What do you mean these machines and these machines? Deuce and Matsuri, you mean? Deuce, yes. Oh. Both banner controls though, so I can switch easily between the two. Loves it. Now, this one, and Dom from Matsura, I need to have a word with you, because I always, I'm simple of mind, can we say. But the MAM 7235V, what does that mean? And I asked Rowan, and he said 35 pallets. And I said, Rowan, you are wrong, my friend. It does make sense, though, doesn't it? It would, well, it should well, make sense. I, who am I to query, Matt Shearer? But the 72, do you know what 72 stands for? Uh, you did tell me, 72 hours. How many hours. hours in a day? Yes, that's it. And what does the 35 stand for? It's 350 mil. There you go, look at that. I was giving him a clue, working envelope. Now, can we get the lights on? Uh, Rowan, you're, 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 you're a driver. a quick look. You press the door button, maybe we'll open it. Uh, uh, I'm afraid can't I can't. Find it. No, I can't. It. Engineers, we can't. But we'll come back out. There's a big working envelope in there. Twin knuckle, five axis, and he's broken. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's that one. We're gonna, there we go. Uh, I'll tell you what, you know how Rome worked that, the light switch out? Because look, picture of a bowl. That's <laughs> sure I have thought of everything. It's genius, that, isn't it? Uh, me the... S simple to use, easy to use, even Colin can use it. Brilliant. But in here, I don't know if Rome can get in here. It's a bit, no COVID restrictions. But down here, you've got the tool measurer. It's a laser system. That's one of the reasons Chatsy Engineer, they thought about everything on this. So basically a laser system, measuring tools, 
nice and simple to use, keeping that machine running. So they load it up, nice vices there, pop their components in, they do two at a time and they'll saw them in half. There you go, load those up. Now how many, how many pallets or billet? Uh, it's 30, what is it, 32 pallets. If you've got 32 pallets, you've got 64 parts. How do you know that? 32 times two. Boom, see, that's a maths-based gag, sorry, Bam. Rowan. But what they're actually <laughs> going to do with this, they're actually going to go some pyramids, so three-sided, so they could do three times two times 32. What, six lot. 32s? Yeah, I've got no idea. Six, six oh, hold on a minute. You did say to me earlier, because we were doing this, I'm sorry if I'm boring people out there, so it's three, six, yeah, I don't know. Way too complex. Come to that in a minute. So, more deucins here, cracking. Is it 192? Like, something like that. So. The final part of our journey is more automation. EDM. What does EDM stand for, my friend? Electro discharge machining, I think. There you go, he's been practicing. And what types are there? There's wire, there's there's die sinking, and there's drilling. Now which one's this, Colin? I don't know. I do know. This is wire. Why would you use EDM though? You'd use an EDM because you've got difficult to cut materials, which uh, you might not be able to machine as quickly as an EDM, which is quite slow, but also difficult to cut Sorry, materials. Not, not machine as quick as a mill. As right. a mill, not right. machine as yep. quick as a mill. Don't and also, you, it, Ryan, but... yeah, that's all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you might also have square internal corners that you can't machine. Whoa, whoa, back off a minute. Hold on. Let's go and show, showcase an example that's being machined at the moment. So you, you start off with this part, end up with this part. So why would you EDM it? Well, in there, again, we'll test Ron's camera skills. So if it's out of focus, all I can do is apologise. But getting in there with a, with a mill, mill, for example, not that easy, difficult material. Get your wire in there, nice and simple. You'd get also, a lot of vibration with that kind of stick out, wouldn't you? That's what I heard, Six, six mil and mil, a lot of vibration. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And also, you're going to have a big slug at the end of it. A, you can recycle that. Or what they'll do is they'll use that big slug, make another part, being super efficient. That's how you do it. So, the point was automation again. I'm thinking automation, wire, not really going to happen. I don't know, and it might not be the great shot, but hopefully you can get in there, Rowan. You can see there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's about 10 parts in there, but if you've got wire, it's all in one piece, you're going to have to come in, re reload it, etc. No, because what it does automatically rewires it itself. So basically, load it up, let it run, you're making money for, I don't know the cycle time this, but 10 hours a day running absolutely non stop. So there you have it. We are at Cal & Co, not the Green Bay Smoothie, up in Sunderland. They are Mackhams, not Geordies. Again, I hope I haven't offended anybody. It's all about investing in new machines, automation, and also the software to go with it so they can make some real complex parts, super fast, super efficient. I think I've covered it all off, Rowan. Anything else you'd like to add? I think you've got everything. I can't hear you. I think you've got everything. There you go. I hope you've enjoyed the quick walk around Cal & Co. Thanks for accommodating us. I'm sure we'll be back very soon. And also thank you to Liz and Tico for sponsoring us.